Hi, this is Epic M Studios coming at you with a tutorial for um, particle traces, such as something like this, where you can see the particles are being traced outwards. Um, now you can use this with any particles as long as they're moving; it'll look good. So let's make a new start file. So file new, of course, like every time. We're going to delete the default cube. Sorry, default cube. And we are going to add a an icosphere as our emitter. Particles need emitters because, well, they're being emitted from the source. In this case, it's the echosphere. It has uh, multiple faces. It doesn't have too many. So, yeah, it's pretty useful. Now we're going to click New to add a new particle system. This is in the Particle System tab, so you might be in the Render tab. Particle. Anyways, we're going to, uh, so you'll see this if you click New. We're going to go down. Set the normal to say five, and see we have an error with the way it's set up. Okay, let it. Um, let's see. There, you can see the particles are spewing out right now, and yeah. But for an explosion, you're gonna want it to say start be only last for one frame so instead of having this at 200 for the end I'm going to set that to 1 alright that will make it so the particles start spewing out at frame number 1 why don't we set that to 6 just to give it some variation but not too much there just like that now we're going to want to have something if you look at the faces there are 80 faces on this you can count them all if you want but so what you're going to want to do we can set the number of particles to 80 for example so there's only one particle per face then we can go to the field weights and let's make it so gravity isn't as much of an influence on these that looks pretty good also we want their lifetime to be longer so instead of just dying at frame 50, then they'll die at a, yeah, they'll have a longer lifetime. Let's set that to 100. We want our animation to be 100 frames. And I only set that to 10 by accident. 100. My mistake. So as you can see, they live for 100 frames right now. And you might be thinking, if we're going to do an explosion or something, wouldn't you want the particles to kind of shoot up more? Why, yes we would. So, what we're going to add to kind of uh, give something for them to collide against first is a plane. Scale this 8 times by pressing S, then 8. Move the plane down. Just get it right below this. I'm also going to scale this in because when we trace our particles, we don't want a big void, an area in the middle where the particles aren't being traced. So I'm going to scale it down about this much. Now you can see the particles are spewing out, but the plane has no effect on them. Let's add collision to the plane. And now, you can see that the particles are bouncing off of it. Let's scale it uh, by twice as much, just so the particles don't really hop off. Now you can see that they're spewing out more. This isn't the desired effect, exactly. Let's add some friction. Also, we don't want permeability at all, actually. Dampening? Yes. So now they're not bouncing around as much. Set the dampening factor to a, something big, if you want. Also, with particles, let's just make them a bit, let's make them come out a bit more. So let's set the, yeah. 10 is a good amount for the normal emission. Now let's scale this by 4, just to make sure that nothing comes through. And as you can see, we have a cool looking thing right here. Now, what we can do 
is add a cache to this. This is the only way to allow us to um, set it as a path. Because the path is what we're going to want at the end to uh, get the cool particle trace effect. For this, we're going to have to save this. So let's save it. I'm just going to save it in temp, temporary, and tutorial. Yeah, as tutorial. Now, if we go into our cache um, thing, yeah, our cache, cache section, section um, then if we hit bake, it'll bake it. It won't take very long if you have a powerful computer or if you just have a good, a, com a newer computer. Because these are, they're only 50 particles or 80 particles, so it really doesn't take that long. Now that everything's baked, we can set them to path. As you can see, we have a cool looking path where the particles actually went. So the particles, as they're coming out, they follow this path. Now let's free this bake. I want them to travel more upwards. So let's set Z to say 4. And let's bake that again. As you can see, they travel up more, upwards more. And by hitting Control Alt Numpad Zero, Number Pad Zero, we can move the camera into a position that where they are viewable. Now that doesn't give us a very good effect. First of all, this should not be visible. Now let's just set the uh, transparency to zero. Now we can't see it, but we still have these ugly-looking paths. To make them look better, I'm going to add a material to the ball. And also, I'm going to make it so the ball is not viewable. By doing th to do that, we can go into the render tab and uncheck emitter. So the emitter, the ball, will not be rendered. It's actually an echo sphere, but whatever. And now we're going to set the material to shadeless. This will give us a cool effect. Now, if you're wondering how to animate this so that it just isn't, it doesn't look like a spider web or something, you can actually, by adjusting the start and end, you can change kind of where the line starts, um, sort of frame rate wise, frame wise, and say if you only want it to be between these two parts on each line you can set it like that the starting point is where it starts so the ending point is kind of the particle during the end of the animation it ended here All right. it started here but you can set the start point to say whichever frame I don't know point two out of one was that and so like that we can easily shift S and uh, cursor to center just because that annoys me but to that, so we can easily just um, animate things that way and what I'm going to do I am going to at frame 0 I'm gonna hit I or right click on it hit insert keyframe and right click on the end I'm actually going to bring it down to zero, insert keyframe. And on frame one, I want this to start. Insert keyframe to make it go to 0 0.47. And let's also insert a keyframe here. Now, Actually, I'm going to move those keyframes. Let's go into our anim animation tab. This is also good to know um, in animation that you can move things. Uh, zoom in there and let's just grab these. And yeah. So you can see we have a neat little explosion effect. Um, but let's um, keep going here. And so. Actually, I'm going to set that to 0.5 just for simplicity. Point, 0 0.05. Sorry. Replace keyframe. Yeah. 
Okay. And at a hundred, we're going to set this to one. All right, a hundred percent. And let's set this to point nine five point zero point nine nine five. Yeah. I think that's what we want it. Or I think that's how we want it. Yes, so by this way, we have a cool looking explosion, particle explosion, and if we just hide that, yeah, now you can see we have a cool looking particle explosion, we've animated the trail and everything and you can see where the particles bounce and even yeah things like that um i hope this was helpful for you uh... sorry if my commentary wasn't the most useful thing ever it's pretty late and yeah uh... by the way sorry for not uploading in a month because i really i didn't have any ideas for anything um, it's kinda yeah and i had a bunch of unfinished projects and stuff um, and also school so it kind of it's like a perfect storm for not making videos but I'm glad I was able to uh, make this one yeah today um, anyways thank you for watching to this point I hope you find this useful for your animation adventures uh, you can assign any material to this to the path you want like if I want to make it green um, yeah so I hope that's useful for you. You can use it to do kind of cool lava things, things like that, little short bursts of things. Um, and you can choose particle for the particle physics. You can choose uh, you make it keyed Boyd's fluid, just anything. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye.